Hello my precious friends, I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our second lesson on the third topic of Form 4 which is called floating and sinking. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day which states that no one has the ability to help everybody in the world, but at least everyone has the ability to help someone in life. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we're looking at further examples involving application of the Ahmed's principle and our first example reads that a cylinder of length 5 cm and cross-sectional area 50.24 uh, square cm is suspended from a spring balance and totally immersed in water. If the density of the material of the cylinder is 1.25 grams per cubic centimeter, determine part A, the upthrust on that particular cylinder. So the first thing we simply sketch the diagram so that we are able uh, to really depict or to see what is actually happening. So we are told that we have a cylinder which has a length of 5 centimeters. So you can see the length of our cylinder is 5 centimeters. Of course, I want to convert it into the SI unit of length, which is the meters. So we know that 100 centimeters is equal to 1 meter. What about 5 centimeters? So this will be 5 centimeters over 100 centimeters times 1 meter, which gives you 0 0.05 meters then you are told that um it has a cross-sectional area of 50.24 square centimeter again we know that the si unit of that is the unit for area or the cross-sectional area is square meter therefore i'll convert the 50.24 uh, square centimeter into square meter we know that 10,000 uh, square meter square centimeter is equal to one square meter what about 50.24 square centimeter so this will be 50.24 divided by 10,000 square centimeter times 1 square meter, which gives us 0 0.005024 square meter. Then it is suspended from, the, uh, from a spring balance and totally immersed in water. So you can see this is our spring balance. Then we are immersing it in water. So if the density of the material of the cylinder is 1.25 gram per cubic centimeter, so again, we convert the density into the SI unit, which are the kilogram per cubic meter. We know that a thousand kilogram per cubic meter is equal to one gram per cubic centimeter. What about 1.25 gram per cubic centimeter? So that will be 1.25 um, over one gram per cubic centimeter multiplied by a thousand kilogram per cubic meter, which gives us 1,250 kilogram per cubic meter. So we are told to find the upthrust on the cylinder. From our previous lesson, we have just said that from the Ahmed's principle, that upthrust must be equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced by a body that is actually immersed in that particular fluid. So in this case, we are immersing our cylinder in the fluid is actually water. So that simply means that the upthrust force will be equal to the weight of the water displaced or the weight of the fluid displaced. But in this case, our fluid is water. So from Ahmed's principle, upthrust will be equal to the weight of the fluid displaced or the weight of the water displaced we know that weight is equal to mass times gravity but because mass is density times volume it simply means that weight can be given by density times volume of course times gravity so uh, the weight of the water displaced will be equal to the density of the water displaced multiplied by the volume of the water displaced but remember in this case the body that is displacing the water is actually the cylinder and because the cylinder was totally immersed in water it simply means that the space that this particular cylinder will occupy will be equal to uh, the volume of the water that will be displaced from that particular uh, container that uh, what you need to always remember is that whenever a body is totally immersed in a fluid then the volume of that particular uh, body will always be equal to the volume of the uh, fluid that is displaced as a result of immersing that particular body in of course in that particular fluid therefore in this case uh, the volume remember volume is the amount of space occupied by a body therefore the space that this particular cylinder is occupying will be equal to the space that is left by the water as a result of it being displaced from that particular fluid therefore the density that is the volume of the cylinder will always be equal to the volume of the water that is displaced therefore upthrust is equal to weight of the fluid displaced which is equal to density of the water displaced times the volume of the water displaced but because the volume of water displaced is equal to the volume of the cylinder because it is the cylinder that is actually displacing that water so we'll simply use the volume of the cylinder displaced because we are given the dimensions for the to find the volume of the cylinder then of course times gravity which is always 10 uh, newton per kilogram or meters per second squared 
So density of the water displaced, we know that the density of water is usually 1,000 kg per cubic meter. So density of water displaced is just 1,000 kg per cubic meter. Volume of the water displaced, which is equal to the volume of the cylinder, we know that um, the volume can be given by cross-sectional area times height because we are given the height and the cross-sectional area of the cylinder. So volume is equal to cross-sectional area, which was 0.005024 square meter of that particular cylinder, then times the height or the length, which of course is 0.05 meters. Then of course we multiply by gravity, which is 10. So if you take a 1,000, multiply it by 0.005024 times 0.005, then of course times 10 you'll obtain uh, up thrust which is equal to the weight of the water that is displaced being equal to 2.512 newton then part b they want us to find the reading on the spring now remember this particular spring it will read the difference between the upward and the downward force of course the only upward force in this case is the up thrust force and the only downward force is the weight of this particular uh, cylinder therefore the difference between the up thrust and the weight of the cylinder will give us the reading on this particular spring because we, we did say that up thrust is a force that is um, exerted on a body that is immersed in a fluid and it tries to make a body to appear lighter than it really is. So up thrust, uh, so the reading on the spring will just be the difference between the weight of the cylinder, which is the total downward force, minus the up thrust, which is representing the total upward force. So weight of the cylinder is given by rho Vg. So density of the cylinder times volume of the cylinder times the gravity. So density of the cylinder, we already have it as uh, 1250 kilogram per cubic meter. Then we multiply by the volume of the cylinder, of course, is cross-sectional area times the height. Cross-sectional area of the cylinder was 0 0.005024 uh, square meter times the height or the length was 0 0.05 meter. Then, of course, we multiply by gravity. Then... Uh, uh, to find the up thrust, or which is equal to the weight of the water displaced, we have already computed it up here as 2.512 uh, newton. So we don't need to recalculate it again. So if you take 1250 multiplied by 0 0.05024 times 0 0.05 times 10, you'll obtain 3.14 newton. Therefore, that is the weight of the cylinder or the total downward force, because we know that the weight depends on gravity, which always acts towards the center of the earth. Then the up thrust, of course, we have already computed it in part A as 2.512 Newton. Therefore, the difference between 3.1414 minus 2.512, you'll obtain it as 0 0.628 Newton. So that will be the reading on the spring. So the spring reads the difference between the up thrust and the weight of this particular cylinder. Next. Our second example reads that a stone weighs 2.0 newton in air and 1.2 newton when totally immersed in water. Calculate part A, the volume of the stone. So the key thing to note here is that when the stone is totally immersed in water, the amount of space that that particular stone will occupy will be equal to the space that has been left by the displaced water or the displaced fluid. So whenever a body is totally immersed in a fluid, its volume will always be equal to the volume of the fluid that is displaced. Therefore, because the stone is totally immersed in water, in short, we are saying that the volume of this particular stone will be equal to the volume of the water that is displaced as a result of immersing that particular stone in water. Therefore, if we find the volume of the water that is displaced, it will just be equal to the volume of that particular stone. So to achieve that, let's start by finding the up thrust. And remember from Ahmed's principle, we simply say that up thrust will always be equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced. Of course, the fluid being displaced in this case is water. Therefore, up thrust is equal to weight of the water displaced. Then we know that up thrust can be given by, because we are given the weight of the stone in air and the weight of the stone when it is totally immersed in water, up thrust will just be equal to the weight in air minus the weight when the body is immersed in water. Because remember, the only thing that is bringing out the difference in this particular weight, you can see uh, when the body is weighed in air, it is having a larger weight of 2 newton as compared to when it is weighed while submerged in water. It is having a smaller weight of 1.2 newton. So what is bringing about that difference is simply the upward force or the up thrust force. Therefore, the difference between the weight in air and the weight in water will just give you the up thrust force. Therefore, up thrust force is equal to weight of the fluid displaced, courtesy of Ahmed's principle. 
but upthrust is equals to weight in air minus weight in water which is equals to the weight of the body in air is 2.0 newton weight of the body when immersed in water is 1.2 newton so the difference gives us 0 0.8 newton then later on we'll see that from the law of flotation which states that a body uh, will always displace its own weight of the fluid that is whenever a body that is for a floating body uh, the weight of the fluid displaced will always be equal to the weight of the body that is displacing that particular fluid therefore because in this case it is the stone that is displacing the fluid then the fluid being displaced is water it simply means that the weight of the stone will always be equal to the weight of the water that is displaced but we know that for us to find the weight of the water displaced uh, weight is given by mass times gravity therefore this is equal to the mass of the uh, water that is displaced time of times of course the gravity we are we are told to take gravity as 10 newton per kilogram remember our aim is to find the volume of the water displaced because we know that the volume of the water displaced will be equal to the volume of the stone so because we already have the upthrust which is equal to the weight of the water displaced which we have found as 0.8 newton so we can use this relationship to compute the mass of the water displaced so that in the end it will help us to find the volume of the uh, water displaced which is equal to the volume of the stone therefore mass of the water displaced times gravity should give you 0 0.8 newton which is the upthrust which is equal to the weight of the water displaced therefore i want to make a mass subject of the formula but first of all i want to substitute the value of gravity we know that gravity is always 10 newton per kilogram that is on earth therefore mass of the water displaced times gravity which is 10 newton per kilogram must give us 0 0.8 newton therefore if i make mass of the water displaced subject of the formula i'll simply divide both sides by 10 newton per kilogram therefore the mass of the water displaced is equal to 0 0.8 newton divided by 10 newton per kilogram which gives us 0 0.08 kilogram therefore this is the mass of the water that is displaced so remember we want to find the volume of the uh, water that is displaced so that it will be equal to the volume of the stone because it is the stone that is displacing the water so because we now have the mass we can now easily find the volume of the water displaced because we know that um, a body will always displace its own volume so the volume of the stone will be equal to the volume of the water that is displaced as a result of totally immersing that particular stone in water therefore volume of the stone is equal to the volume of the water displaced but you know that volume is equal to mass over density therefore volume of the water displaced is equal to the mass of the water displaced over the density of the water displaced therefore mass of the water displaced we already have it uh, from up here at 0 0.08 kg then divided by we know that the density of water is usually a thousand kilogram per cubic meter therefore if you compute this quotient that is 0 0.08 divided by a thousand you'll obtain 0 0.00008 cubic meter so that is the volume of the water that is displaced and because water is displaced as a result of totally immersing that particular stone the volume of the water displaced will be equal to the volume of the stone that is displacing that water therefore volume of the stone is equal to volume of the water displaced which is equal to 0 0.00008 cubic uh, meter then part b they want us to find the density of the stone of course for you to find density you must have the mass of the stone and the volume of the stone therefore we have a task to find the mass of the stone because we already have the volume of the stone that is from part a so our aim is to find the mass of the stone first so uh, because we are told that a stone weighs 2.0 newton in air so this is the actual or the true weight of that particular stone so the weight of the stone we know that weight is equal to mg so weight is equal to mass of the stone times the gravity then of course the weight of the stone uh, in air is 2.0 newton so 2 newton is equal to the mass of the stone times of course the gravity which we are given as 10 newton per kilogram therefore the mass of the stone will be equal to i'll simply make mass of the stone subject of the formula by dividing both sides by 10 newton per kilogram therefore mass of the stone will be 2 kilo 2 newton divided by 10 newton per kilogram which gives us 0 0.2 kilogram so the aim of finding the mass of the stone is that so that we can find the density of the stone because you know that density is equal to mass over volume and you already have the volume of the stone therefore density of the stone is equal to mass of the stone over volume of the stone so mass of the stone is 0.2 kg 
divided by the volume of the stone from part A is 0 0.00008 cubic meter. So if you compute this quotient, you'll find uh, 2,500 kilogram per cubic meter as the density of that particular stone. Lastly, I have an exercise that I recommend you should try at your own free time to get the understanding of the concepts that you have just learned. Of course, if you have any challenges in handling any of the questions, feel free to drop a comment specifying the question that you need help in. And as usual, I'm always here to try and help where possible. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that no one has the ability to help everybody in the world, but at least everyone has the ability to help someone in life. So the quote is urging us to be of help to everyone around us because you just never know what experiences someone has been through before seeking help from you. Therefore, I challenge you to be a source of hope and a source of light in someone else's darkness. Remember that most people in the world are silently fighting internal battles in their personal lives and some are even on the brink of losing hope and getting depressed. Therefore, your little word of encouragement could mean a lot to them. And lastly, recall that you will never truly understand how difficult someone's situation is until it happens to you. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not get, take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll get notified. Thank you for the positive comments. Thank you um for your continued support i really appreciate until next time this is kind to sean academy thank you very much